Devil May Cry holds a special place in my abyssal black hole of a gaming heart. I vividly remember my first dive into the series back in 2006 when the special edition of Devil May Cry 3 hit the shelves. It was like discovering a hidden treasure trove of adrenaline field action and style unlike anything I had experienced before. From there, I delved even deeper into the demon-infested world of DMC, experiencing every installment from the iconic Devil May Cry 1 to the polarizing reboot a million years. And even immersing myself in the anime, DMC has remained a pillar over the years as one of my favorite series. So when the thought arose to revisit the game that started it all, Devil May Cry 1, and strive for a platinum trophy, I couldn't resist. Let's rock, baby. The challenge ahead is quite formidable, conquering every difficulty, scouring every corner for blue orbs and weapons, discovering elusive enemy files, and completing the secret missions. Surprisingly, despite my countless journeys through Devil May Cry's demon-infested landscapes, I've never tackled the game on hard mode, DMD mode, or even attempted to achieve full completion. But there's a first time for everything, and I'm feeling pretty f motivated. So who knows? Maybe the dreaded Dante Must Die mode won't be as soul-crushing as I anticipated. As I dive into the first of three playthroughs, Devil May Cry immediately immerses me in its succulent lore. We're introduced to Sparta, a legendary devil who turned against his own kind to protect humanity in a war. After effortlessly soloing the lobby, Sparta subtly ruled, preserving peace until his demise, earning him a post-mortem reputation feared by all devils. Enter Dante, our charismatic protagonist who sits at third place on the hottest video game hunks of all time list, right behind Cloud and spiritual stepbrother Leon Kennedy. It's actually quite fascinating to note that Devil May Cry was initially conceived as Resident Evil 4, but its deviation from the core series led to its evolution into its own thing. Remnants of DMC's former identity remain present in its final version and can be found everywhere. Even in Dante's resemblance to Leon Cool Guy Kennedy, if Leon were the frontman for a Japanese visual K-band. It's some pretty cool shit, man. Our story kicks into high gear when a mysterious mommy, Trish, crashes her bike into Dante's shop, revealing his lineage as the son of Sparta. Having lost his brother and mother to evil, Dante embraces his role as a devil hunter. Trish's unexpected attack confirms Dante's identity and she reveals her purpose, seeking Dante's aid against Mundus, the Emperor of the Underworld. Now Mundus had his fade ran by Sparta years ago, but is now resurfaced on Malay Island and is plotting his salty runback, which involves opening the gates to the Underworld and unleashing chaos upon the world. Realizing that his destiny is intricately linked to the fate of this plane of existence, Dante makes his way to Malay, accompanied by Trish. Taking my first steps onto Malay Island, I quickly acclimate to the gameplay's dated mechanics and fixed camera angles, smoothly navigating through the initial missions. I even secure my first trophy for completing a blue orb. Blue Demon. There we go. First trophy of the run. Love to see it. However, the real test comes with the first boss fight against Phantom, who serves as a formidable gatekeeper for the challenges ahead. DMC has obtained quite the reputation for its steep difficulty, even on normal mode. Battling both the enemies and the troublesome camera demands skill and precision. Two things I'm known for, obviously. Back up. Oi, oi. Oh, I can't move. I can't move. I can't move. That's garbage, yo. I couldn't move. He was body blocking me, fat bitch. I'd get my win back during the rematch and the arachnophobia trophy to go with it. Yes! Oh my god! Arachnophobia, nice. I actually had to run this mission over again because I forgot to do the secret mission. Oops. 
Coming off the back end of the Phantom fight, I've got to backtrack across this platforming nightmare of a bridge to knock out the first of 12 secret missions. Thank God, give me that Get me out of here, dog. Get me out of here. For whatever reason, the trophy didn't pop, but I did receive the Can You Keep a Secret trophy for completing my first secret mission. For the sake of time, I'll only be covering secret missions when trophies pop for them. After all, they wouldn't be very secretive if I went and told you where they all were now, would they? Entering mission four, I started employing a red orb farming technique. At the mission's outset, you're promptly pursued by Phantom. Instead of fleeing, engaging him in combat with the aid of Devil Trigger allows you to dispatch him effortlessly, yielding 1,000 red orbs. By promptly saving the game and reloading it from the title screen, you'll restart at the beginning of the mission with the 1,000 orbs intact. Rinse, repeat, and reap the rewards. Now, you might be wondering, why would I be bothering with a farming technique in the first place? Well, one of the critical strategies for success at Devil May Cry, especially on higher difficulties, is amassing a stockpile of items to aid in your survival. Yellow orbs essentially function as extra lives. Without one, dying means restarting the mission from scratch. But with a yellow orb, you'll respawn at the latest checkpoint. While I won't be accumulating a billion of them, the importance of having a surplus can't be overstated. Vital and Devil Stars are invaluable for bailing you out of tight spots, providing a crucial boost when you're on the brink of defeat. Then there are the real heavy hitters, Holy Waters and Untouchables. These items are practically cheat codes, and I adore them. Holy Water unleashes a devastating AoE attack dealing massive damage to nearby enemies, including bosses. Although they're significantly nerfed on higher difficulties, they remain incredibly useful. Untouchables grant temporary invincibility and unlimited devil trigger, essentially serving as the ultimate I win button, especially when stockpiled. With all that said, I dedicated the next few hours to grinding orbs. <laughs> oh, this is getting expensive. 2920 is how much I need for the next one. All right, let's do it. Let's lock in. Eventually, I hit the shop caps on all items except yellow orbs, even purchasing all available combat upgrades, blue orbs for increased max health. I can buy another one. 4300. All right, challenge accepted. Oh my god. <laughs> it's still going. F <laughs> oh god. All right. Boom. That's it. No more blue orbs. And purple orbs for enhanced devil trigger, earning these trophies along the way. With my arsenal as fully upgraded as it could be up to this point and items stocked up, I could finally proceed. Hacking and slashing my way through mission 4, I achieved the Thunderstruck trophy for pulling off an S rank combo with Alistor. Shortly after, I faced off against Nello Angelo, the second boss and my personal favorite in the game. What sets Nello Angelo apart is the straightforward blade-to-blade -blade brawl he offers, which, in my opinion, represents the essence of Devil May Cry's best moments as a series. While the other bosses each offer their own unique challenges, Nello Angelo's battles seamlessly complement the gameplay mechanics. Defeating him earned me the You're No Angel trophy. Trophy, you're no angel. There we go. Hell yeah. 
In Mission 5, I saw the chance to claim two trophies at once. First, I earned the Untouchable Trophy for completing the mission without taking any damage. And then, I secured the Smashing Sensation Trophy for achieving an S rank on that same exact mission. Phantom made a comeback from Round 2, showcasing a few new moves and a beefier health pool. Sending him packing to the game over screen rewarded me with the squashed like a bug trophy. Get him out of here, f him. I ain't got time for this bull Eat it, idiot. Squash like a bug. Love it, love it, love it. During mission nine, I found myself facing off against Griffin. You, are you the human? The son of Sparta who challenges the darkness for this. Block off, Featherface, or you can stick around and find out the hard way. I gotta admit, I really hate Griffin. I really don't know what else to say about it. Fighting Griffin makes my balls itch. Dodging his moves isn't the problem. It's trying to land solid hits without getting punished that just drives me crazy. Resorting to grenade launcher spam is often the safest bet, but even then, Griffin's constant movement makes it a tedious task due to the weapon's slow fire rate and sluggish lock-on. Dante, this aim is crazy, dude. <laughs> wow. And don't even get me started on his orbs and lasers. They're in a league of their own. Maybe it's just a skill issue on my end, but when Griffin decides to unleash both attacks simultaneously, I just feel like chucking my controller out the f***ing window and calling it a day. Luckily for me, this first run-in with Griffin wasn't too brutal. But get this. I later found out that I could have skipped the whole debacle by lighting a torch near the door with Ifrit and skedaddling on out of there. Hindsight really is 2020. After finally putting Griffin in his place and wrapping up the mission, I bagged the Birds of Prey trophy. Bird of Prey. Sick. In a blink and you'll miss it moment during mission 11, I scored four trophies, three of them practically back to back within just four minutes. Stop, bitch. Bookworm? I got bookworm. Okay. I'll take that. Nice. Bookworm and Secret Six right off the jump. Easy mode. And there we go, hot as hell, just like that. And to top it off, I faced off against Nello Angelo once more and clinched another victory, earning the Broken Halo Trophy. Navigating through the perilous waters of Mission 12, I stumble upon a ghost ship where I nearly meet my end at the hands of Death Scythe. Dude, what am I supposed to do? This is... I hate this 
guy, dude. Dude. But just when I think I've cheated death, the game decides to toss me right back into the lion's den with Griffin. Except this time, we're duking it out on a friggin' boat. So there I am, facing off against a devil AC-130 on this scallywag-ass pirate ship they've got me stranded on. At least we got a trophy, though. Skipping ahead a bit into mission 15, I pick up Nightmare Beta, which is the last weapon needed for the Gun Collector trophy. And then I have one final clash with Griffin. After handing him his defeat for the third time, he begs Mundus for one last boost to finish the job. Mundus responds with a hearty serving of get good scrub and smites him before having a good laugh and leaving. This triggers a major emotional moment for Dante as he opens up to Trish about his past trauma. It's revealed that Mundus is responsible for the deaths of Dante's family, leading Dante to vow to avenge them in Sparta's honor. But amidst all this heavy stuff, there's something really sus going on with Trish's energy. She seems Oddly captivated by Dante's tale of suffering, giving off some serious Padme Attack of the Clones vibes. Let me tell you, that late 90s, early 2000s Capcom cringe is really starting to stand tall towards the end game here. Approaching the late stages in the game, I run into Nightmare for the first time. So Nightmare is easily the worst boss in the game. Sure, I've left plenty of shit on Griffin's doorstep, but Nightmare takes the cake for obnoxiousness. You can only chip away at its health bar after attacking the wall runes, which forces Nightmare out of its oozy shell. Once it's out, Nightmare starts throwing everything in the kitchen sink at you. Projectile attacks galore. There are turrets, lasers, spice from its back, spears from its sides, and even a f boomerang. No way. That's... come on, bruh. After each attack, it exposes its weak spot, and I found the most effective strategy is to enter Devil Trigger mode and spam Air Raid. On normal difficulty, this tactic shreds its health, at least during the first encounter. But watch out for its grab move. It's the cheesiest move in Nightmare's arsenal. If it does manage to grab you, you'll be transported to a realm where you'll have to face floating skulls and then a Mimic boss. The Mimic boss could be any of the bosses you fought before, if you're skilled enough, you can defeat the boss, dealing a massive blow to Nightmare. Personally, I try to avoid that whole situation altogether. Night Terrors, nice. We're cleaning up, we're cleaning up. Mission 17 marks the ultimate showdown with Nello Angelo, who sheds his mask to reveal a face eerily similar to Dante's before we throw down. It's pretty much the same Nello fight as before, but now he's throwing summon sword attacks into the mix, ramping up the aggression, and making full use of the garbage camera angles in his arena. He goes down, but not without putting up a real fight. There we go. Got him. Upon his final defeat, Nello Angelo drops an amulet that looks just like Dante's. It's the same amulet that triggered Nello's earlier meltdown. When Dante picks it up, he hears the voices of his long-gone brother and mother from happier times. If you haven't pieced it together yet, Nello Angelo is actually Dante's deceased brother Virgil. Mundus drops that bomb in the following cutscene where we also learn that Trish is in cahoots with the big baddie. Yeah, because the lady who wrecked Dante's shop, shocked him, impaled him, and then tried to throw a motorcycle at him was totally trustworthy, right? Damn! After that earth-shattering revelation, I find myself on mission 18 where Nightmare goes down for the second time and I snag the final skill needed unlocking both Good Night and the Devils in the Details trophies. 
Now it's time to venture into the underworld. After acquiring the Philosopher's Stone, I head back to the castle and use the Nightmare Ooze portal to access the gate to the underworld. Surrendering the Philosopher's Stone gains me entry. After hacking through flesh walls and facing off with a couple of frosts, Trish tricks Dante into another bout with Nightmare. Thank God this'll be the last one. Midway through the fight, Trish decides to join in, hurling lightning bolts from outside the arena to try and hamper my progress. Nightmare, being the scumbag that he is, is running second chance on this loadout, regaining some health and launching into his deadliest attacks, just when I thought I had him beat. But just like every other boss up to this point, the bitch does eventually bite the big one. In the aftermath, Dante swoops in to save Trish's skin. <sighs> Dante! Dante, why did you save my life? Because you look like my mother. Now get out of my sight. The next time we meet, it won't be like this. Any closer, you devil! You may look like my mother, but you're nowhere close to her. You have no soul. You have the face, but you'll never have her fire. Brother, this sh is crazy. So essentially, Mundus whips up Trish, slaps on the mommy makeover, and then uses her to lure Dante all the way out to Malay Island so he can kill him. That's the most godlike honey dicking I've ever seen. Before bringing the heat to Mundus, I needed to knock out the final secret mission in the game, which turned out to be a marathon culminating in a tussle with a T-Rex skeleton. Luckily, this skelly was a breeze to handle, just a simple loop and it was OVA. After taking down three frosts and a bit of platforming, I snagged the bangle of time, sealing the deal on the secrets out trophy. With all of that out of the way, I now have a clear shot at Mundus. During his long-winded supervillain monologue, he attempts to flatline Dante, but Trish sacrifices herself to save him, effectively ending her own life. Enraged by Trish's death, Dante embraces the power of Sparta and prepares for the final showdown. Like every other boss in the game, Mundus has three phases, with two consecutive phases followed by a third at the very, very end of the game. The first phase catches players off guard with rail shooter mechanics introduced out of nowhere. To make matters worse, the controls for it are inverted, adding an extra layer of frustration. Initially, Dante is positioned too far away from Mundus, making it challenging to accurately target the runes protecting him from damage. On higher difficulties, some of Mundus's attacks become nearly impossible to dodge, but on a first playthrough at a manageable difficulty, this section is tolerable.
Unfortunately for me, the second phase isn't much better, involving platforming, dodging drones, and building Devil Trigger until Dante can get close enough to unleash a barrage of attacks. Fortunately, this strategy is sufficient to defeat Mundus and earn the trophy on normal difficulty. Following Mundus' initial defeat, Dante delivers what is now considered one of the most cringe-worthy yet iconic lines in gaming history. I should have saved you. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! That second-hand embarrassment? Yeah, I feel it too. But there's no time to sit around and dwell on that as Malay Island is beginning to collapse. Dante leaves Trish, now fallen, with his amulet and father sword, finding closure with his family. Now we need to get our asses on out of here too, or else we're gonna join her. Rushing back to the human world, it's time to make a desperate escape. Navigating through the crumbling castle, Dante is once again confronted by Mundus, determined to destroy him. Dante, you are not getting away. This is where you will die. I'm not going anywhere. Besides, there's no place to go. Look around. This will be your burial ground as well. With nowhere left to run, we make our final stand. After a brief battle, Trish returns from the dead to lend Dante her power, enabling him to finally obliterate Mundus, sending his ass right on back to the Shadow Realm. Jackpot. With death looming and the world crumbling around them, Dante and Trish decide that this is just the perfect time to have another moment. Dante, I, I... Trish, devils never cry. These tears, tears are a gift only humans have. Guys, come on. Do we really gotta do this right now, please? Thankfully, this plane crashes through the floor and breaks up this little game of grab ass these two were playing. Using said plane, Dante and Trish make their daring escape from the now obliterated Malay Island. Dante, with Trish as his partner, opens a new shop under a new name, and with that, playthrough one is wrapped up. And my reward? These two trophies and access to the game's hard difficulty. Going into it, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling real good. With 29 out of the 34 total trophies already in the bag. During this tougher run, I focused on knocking out the two remaining trophies that weren't tied to difficulty. First up was Blue Devil, awarded for maxing out the health bar. It only required me to track down one missed blue orb from my initial playthrough. Okay, now we have a full health bar. That should give us that achievement. Achievement trophy. Achievement? The f***? There we go. Blue Devil. Max out the health bar. GG. Next on the list, Worthy Enemy Files. This has been the most infuriating task on my Platinum journey thus far. Honestly, I can't even fathom how anyone could achieve this trophy in a reasonable time frame without a guide. Some of these entries require incredibly specific circumstances to unlock, making them way more luck-based than skill. A fine example would be the third paragraph for the enemy, the fetish. You're supposed to let the fetish jump onto you and do its grab attack in order to unlock the entry, but actually getting this to go down without a hitch is damn near impossible, it seems like. 
Dude. <laughs> I'm this close. I'm this close to spiking my fucking controller like a football on this fucking floor. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. How is he missing? I swear. How? I'm fucking right there. How is it missing? I'm gonna need a new controller here in a minute. <laughs> Can we be done now, please? Thank God, dude. Thank f***ing God. Fuck you. Fuck this game. Ain't no reason that should have been as hard as it f***ing was, dude. Another example of this is the final entry for Shadow. To unlock it, you have to jump on top of its spear, activate Devil Trigger, and shoot it with handguns while it's vulnerable, causing Shadow to turn red and perish immediately. It sounds simple, right? Well... On a normal playthrough where enemies are weaker, it's feasible. But on hard mode, forget about it. The damage output just isn't enough. I was spending an absurd amount of time attempting this repeatedly during my hard playthrough, only to realize I needed to backtrack and replay the game on normal difficulty just to do enough damage to unlock the entry. Still nothing. It's not working. I just ended up speedrunning the game on hard to swiftly earn the boiling trophy, then started yet another normal playthrough to finally snag the remaining files I needed. Got him. Okay, there it is. Holy f I had to do another playthrough on normal just to get that because he's got too much health on hard. Wow. <laughs> Bro, I did that like 12 times. These examples are just the tip of the iceberg. There are plenty of other entries with similarly ridiculous requirements that you would never stumble upon without either playing through the game over and over again or just consulting a guide. It's always either performing some insanely specific action or just waiting around with your thumb up your ass until something miraculous happens. The shit just sucks, bro. But now we're finally here. Dante must die difficulty. After grinding through five or six playthroughs for extra items, I felt pretty prepared. But let me tell you, DMD mode tested my patience and abilities more than I ever anticipated. Going in blind, I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. Normal and hard modes were a breeze compared to this. I mean, check out the charts, brother. The jump from normal to hard, light work. But from hard to DMD, brutal. Bosses now hit like a truck, dealing five times the standard damage. And if that wasn't enough, enemies now have their own devil trigger, buffing their health and damage output while making them resistant to hit stun. Plus, there's the added pressure of room timers. If you don't clear out all the enemies before the clock runs out, they'll go into DT mode. And going into DT mode doesn't even regenerate Dante's health. Now I get why they didn't offer this difficulty from the get-go. Having memorized the route through the game, I spent most of my time running past enemies when I could, just trying to make it from the start of the level to the end, really only fighting when rooms required me to. I made it up to Nello Angelo 1 before the shit burger I ordered arrived at my table, and DMD mode was gonna stand right there and watch me take every single bite. Maybe the dreaded Dante Must Die mode won't be as soul-crushing as I anticipated. Oh, DDS.
You're such a dumb bastard. Oh! Oh! Oh, bro, that shit hurts! No! Oh, I don't like Shadow. I don't like Shadow. Fuck Shadow. Come on now, dog. How? It didn't even touch me. Really? You just gonna spam jump? That's pretty corny. Bro! Stop! Bro! Bro! I jumped into it, dude. Mother dude. Can y'all fucking stop with this jumping bullshit? God damn! No! Are you kidding me? Suck a dick, dude! I. Fuck. Bro. Uh oh. What the fuck? Love that. Love that. I can't f***ing... I think in my fit of rage, I stopped the recording on accident. I think I slammed my hand on my desk and somehow stopped the recording because it just was not recording at all. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, you know, I think I'm done for the night. This game can kiss my ass. Yeah, no, I'm good. And that was how my first day of Dante Must Die went. I must admit, I made it a lot farther than I thought I would before rage quitting. This was tough, but I've done all the combat challenges in Batman Arkham Asylum. Surely this would not be the challenge that would break me down. I'll just come back to it again tomorrow and probably get it first try. Tomorrow. No! This dude jumped right in front of the beam. What are you supposed to do? All right, maybe not first try, but definitely this time. Fuck it, dude. Go. Get in there. Kill him. Yes! Yes!
with Nightmare down for the count, my sight shifted towards Mundus. At this stage, I'd been through the ringer, my resilience tested, my spirit battered. Yet, with nothing left to lose, I faced Mundus with unwavering determination. There wasn't a thing he could do to me that would shatter my resolve. <laughs> Ah, well, except for that. A couple more of those and I'm uninstalling. I slowly managed to chip away at his health until he had just enough left for me to execute my final daring move. With my last two untouchables in hand, I leaped into the lava and dealt the decisive blow. Now that the toughest challenges trail behind me, I began my triumphant escape through the underworld, back to the portal, and then back to the castle. But just when I thought victory was within reach, Mundus intercepted me once more. For the long sought after platinum trophy, I knew I had to defeat him one last time before riding off into the sunset. Looks like we have a winner. And so, with Mundus vanquished, Malay Island was consumed by flames, marking the end of my very first Dante Must Die mode playthrough and my Devil May Cry Platinum Adventure. There's combustible, done, and the platinum. I'm done! I'm done! I'm done! I'm done! Oh, thank God. Oh. Oh. What a wild ride this has been. Despite the wonky camera angles and dated gameplay, Devil May Cry remains one of my all-time favorite games. Its impact on the gaming world is simply undeniable. And even though it's not flawless, its legacy is rock solid. I'm itching to dive back into the rest of the series someday, maybe even revisit some of the less stellar entries. But for now, a huge thank you to everyone who joined me on this journey. If you enjoyed the ride, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more Platinum Trophy adventures just like this one.